What's up, Faith Room? Good morning. Good morning. Happy Monday, baby. Let's go. Good morning to you. It's a motivational Monday. This is the day that the Lord has made. I'm rejoicing and I'm glad in it. Get on up, y'all, and come on up in this room on today. I'm riding solo today, so I need y'all help today. I'm riding solo. Elder Cherie has another funeral. So she is not in today, but she's watching. Uh, Pastor O, Pastor Cash, shout out to them. Kim, shout out to her. But it's you and me. Come on, y'all. Let's go. It's a motivational Monday. Y'all, let's get this day started right. Come on. I feel like God is going to do something amazing in this place today, in this week. Come on, y'all. Let's go. I need you today. Y'all going to be my co-host today. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It's going to be a great, great day. Uh, shout out to everybody. It's going it, to, listen, it's a make it happen Monday for me. It's a make it happen Monday for me. I need somebody. Janice said it's a marvelous Monday. Come on. Come on, y'all. Declare your day this morning. Good morning, y'all. Good morning. Happy Monday. We made it. Magnificent Monday. I see y'all. Julie Gant, today will be a motivating faith moving Monday. Uh, yeah. Thank you for tagging Trice. Uh, Lady Burst, love you. Thank you so much for the hospitality this weekend. Such great hospitality this weekend. Thank you to you and Pastor Don for having me and Pastor Adisa this weekend. Pearl say, it's a cold walking morning. Come on. <laughs> Go on and get your walk in, Pearly. Get it going. Art, uh, good morning, Art. Good morning. Kirsten is tagging people. Kirsten, get mama in here. There you go, girl. Uh, come on in, y'all. Good morning to you. I like this. Y'all coming in here today. All right, y'all. Let me do this now. Y'all know I'm riding solo. Y'all need to be patient. Lois Young says, it's a beautiful Monday. Toya Glover, what's up, Georgia? In the room. All right. Michelle Bryant said, make it happen Monday. Make it happen Monday. Make it happen. Y'all, Barbara said, good morning. Good morning. Vern again in the building. I see you, Ramika tagging some people. Let me do the very same thing, y'all. Let me tag some folk. Let me tag some folk. We're already at 107 right now. Uh, Tanya Reynolds said, good morning, Faith Room. Happy Motivational Monday. What's going on, sis? Good morning to you. All right, y'all, let me tag a few people. Y'all bear with me. Y'all speak to each other now. Speak to each other. And uh, let me tag some folk in, in this thing this morning so that we can get going. I have a word for you today that I believe will carry you through the day and carry you through the week. Uh, thank you, Nancy. Nancy says it's a victorious Monday. Nancy, I receive that, sis. I receive that in Jesus' name. Come on, y'all. Tag some people in for Pastor Nate. Charles Gooden over there in YouTube world. Listen, guys, if you're in YouTube world, do me a favor. Go ahead and like this video right now. Just go on and hit like, and then you can share it as well. Go on and hit like, and you can share uh, the video as well over there on YouTube uh, nation. All right. Good morning to everybody. I see you coming in. Y'all let me tag some folk up in this thing this morning and uh, we're going to get going. OK, uh, we have one hundred and sixty five already. LaShawn Smith said uh, happy Monday. Blessed by the best God. Uh, blessed by the best. God is good. What's up, Celeste? Good morning to you. All right, Celeste. Good to see you. Celeste watches from L.A., y'all. Celeste up in the hood, up there in uh, up there in uh, e, well, Easy E Land. That's my friend. Though. I love you, Celeste. Appreciate you, girl. Happy Monday uh, to you. She said, "Good morning, Faith Room and Tor and and Gatoria. See, Antigoria, I got your name right. All right, I got it right. After 15 tries, girl, I got it right. The man with the plan, the greatest host in the world, Pastor Don Burst, who's also a faith rumor. Y'all know Pastor Burst out here in Vegas holding his holding his stuff together out here. Just an excellent ministry, man. Sheila Gray, say it for the people in the back. It's a mind over matter Monday. Say it for the people in the back, Sheila. Come on. Right, y'all, let me tag a few people. Y'all messing with me now. Let me tag a few people. Y'all speak to each other. Say, hey, say what's up. Do that for Pastor Nate. Say what's up. Say what's happening. Say what's going on. Say what it do. Y'all do all that for me this morning, okay? Good morning, Tamika Equatia. Good morning. 
Listen, y'all, do me a favor. If you're here for the first time, will you type in number one? That's all you got to do. Type in one, 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 one. You type in one, we're going to celebrate you for being here for the first time. Type in one if you're here for the very, very first time. I want to celebrate you. I want us to see your faith room. If you see them, y'all let them know that uh, you're happy to have them in the room. All right, y'all, here's some, here's some people coming in for the first time. Josie Lyons. Y'all going to say what's up to Josie? Josie, what's up, sis? What's up, Josie? Good to see you this morning. Josie Lyons is in the building. Who else is in here? Uh, Blair Wright is in the building. Y'all give Blair some love. Let me get it. Let me get it, Blair. I saw it. Blair Wright is in the building for the first time. Y'all going to show him some love, Faith Room? Show him some love. Ain't no party like a Faith Room party. Because a Faith Room party don't stop. Come on in. Welcome, y'all. You see them? They're they giving you some love, Josie and uh, Blair. They're giving you some love. Y'all, Lisa up in the building for the first time. Y'all let Lisa know you're happy to see her this morning. Come on. All right. That's four guests, four new guests this morning. That's what's up. Good to have y'all this morning. If you're here for the first time, type one, type one. And the guests who are in here, let us know where you're watching from. Let us know where you're watching from. Let us know where you at, where you be, where you be. All right. Good morning. Tony Gant, thank you, man, for everything. You and Pat, man. Pearly, your brother did, your brother did as well, Pearly. Mm hmm. Your brother did as well. Had a had a care bag and I had me some. Listen, y'all, he put some mask in my bag and put me some Blair. You in L.A.? Blair say I'm in L.A. Blair, good to have you. Uh, Tony put some some uh, some uh, mask in my bag. He put some uh, Mentos and all that. Uh, thank you, man. Uh, you and Pat looked out for me and Adisa this weekend. Okay. All right, y'all. Let me tag a few more people. Y'all leave me alone for a minute. Leave me alone for a minute. And uh, if you're a guest for the first time, just type in one. Type in one. If you're here for the first time, that would be real, real cool. And I appreciate that so much. Let's get some people in the building. We're already at 213, y'all. 213, 213, which is good already, already. All right, y'all. I'm going to tag a few more people. Then I'm going to tag this to my page. And Pastor Nate's got a word for you today. Amen. Pastor Larry Johnson, Bishop, honey from the rock. Good to have you, Bishop, man. You've been so supportive, man. And uh, you are a giant in the kingdom, Bishop. And I love you, sir. I honor you, Bishop Johnson. I honor you as a general in the kingdom, man. You and Miss Pat, uh, Lady Pat, evangelist, pastor, uh, your right hand. Uh, we thank God for you. Tracy Davis said, good morning, Faith Room. Tracy said, Janae, I miss you, girl. Janae, we got to catch up this week. All right. I need to I need to talk to you, Jay, just to make sure you make sure you're holding in there, holding in there. Good to see you. San Diego, Jamie, say I'm in the building. Uh, Chief Nation. Let, I'm going to let her get her 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 one minute. Uh, the Kansas in any Chiefs fans in the faith room today in the Chiefs fan. I'm going to let y'all go on and get one minute. I'm gonna let y'all get one minute of uh, glory in today. Any Chiefs fan, go ahead and get your glory in. That game made me so mad. I was really pulling for the underdog, man. Uh, I'm an underdog guy. Buffalo should have won that game. Come on, Faith. 13 seconds, and Mahomes took him down and, and did that thing, man. We got to give it to him. He took it 13 seconds. That's unacceptable. The defensive coordinator ought to be fired. What y'all think? All right, the Ram, we got a Rams fan. Go on, Brittany. I'll let you get your fame, your one minute in. Since my my team not playing, so I can't talk about nobody. Yeah, Tracy wanted Buffalo. It's sad. Nish said it's sad. It was so sad. Nish, I'm with you. I thought Buffalo had that thing yesterday, but uh, things happen. He always comes through. Mahone, he a beast. He a beast, for real. He is a beast. He did it. All right. Quasha said, my brother's a Chief fan, but they tried. They Listen, they Buffalo tried. They just, yeah, they just couldn't pull it off. Couldn't pull it off, but it's all good. Uh, Kamal, Raider Nation, but Kamal, I, I mean, I like that you're not a fair weather fan, but, uh, yeah, they had the crib too. Yeah, they had the crib with the Falcon. Yeah, Yaffa, 13 seconds is all you need. Y'all, for that's true. There's some preaching power in that. Uh, that's a Niners fan. Tanisha's a Niners fan. Uh, y'all, y'all rooting for the Niners? And I mean, California since uh, 
San Diego Chargers not in it, but you got the Rams, so you you good. Simon, what's up, Pastor Norwood? Good to see you, man. Love you. Be safe out there, brother. Praying for you every day, Simon. You in my prayer journal, bro. I promise you that. Uh, my team not in. Who your team, Betsy? <laughs> Brittany say that the crib with the cap. No, Brittany being oh, Brittany. Now you may get. Uh, these cowboy fans are still a little, a little shady, Britt. So I'm, I'm gonna let you go. On. Let me let let me see who's gonna talk noise to you this morning, Britt, because uh, cowboy fans are still a little bitter about uh about their season. But we'll see, we'll see. Y'all tag some people in. We're gonna get started. How I many? We had uh, ten minutes. We're gonna get started in just a minute. All right. Motivational Monday, and I have a word for you today that I think will be very powerful. Cowboy fans, y'all gonna let her talk to y'all like that? Cowboy Nation, y'all going to let her talk to y'all like that? Let me see what they're going to say to you, B. And uh, we'll go ahead. <laughs> what they saying? How about them Cowboys? There's a fan here. Yeah, she's still – She's still, uh, Julie said, I'm still room for my squad. That's all good. All right, y'all, tag a few more people for Pastor Nate, and we're going to get up in this thing. I believe today there's a word of hope for you, and, um, and I'm going to release it on today. I'm going to release it on today. Good morning. All right. John said, hopefully the Bengals will knock the Chiefs out. Go Rams all the way. He's a Rams fan. Yeah, John, I'm rooting for the, I'm rooting for the Bengals. So, again, I'm for the underdogs, man. I'm for the people who others have given up on, man. I'm for the, I'm for the underdogs. So, hopefully, hopefully they will do that. Hopefully they will do that. So, we'll see. All right, y'all, give me one more minute, okay? Give me one more minute, and then we're going to get started. Uh I'm excited about this word today, man. Y'all, we're going to have a great week. We're going to have a great week. He said, Pastor Nate showed out yesterday. I won't forget that word, man. I love you, man. You're so encouraging, Burst. Don't make me cry, man. Don't make me cry. All right. Thank y'all, man. And uh, and Pastor Burst is not fully reopened as far as regathering because we, we never close. I say that. But... um. Yeah, but it was still a good time yesterday. And, uh, man, the hospitality was absolutely amazing. Brenda Walton said good morning, everybody. Brenda said good morning to everybody, okay? All right, y'all, I'm going to get started right now. Let me go on and uh, tag this to my page, and then we're going to roll, all right? We're going to roll. And I have a word today. I think this word is going to take you through today, y'all. It's going to take us through today. It's going to take me through today as well. It's going to take us through today. Uh, and hopefully it's going to take us through the week. So I'm having to do this on my own solo, but it's all good. Um, praying for Cherie, who's at a funeral today. And that's always hard when you have to uh, attend those funerals. But Cherie, your covered co-host. We're praying for Pastor O. We're praying for Pastor KJ. Pastor KJ uh, is getting over being under the weather. But he's healed in Jesus' name. Shout out to Kim Hall. Kim is in. Shout out to them as well, okay? All right, y'all, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get started now. And uh, I want you to grab your Bible if you can. It's a motivational Monday, y'all. And um, I want to deal with a message today uh, to motivate you how to handle the weight. How to handle, how to handle the weight. Y'all type that type that, that title in for me. How to handle the weight. Y'all type that in for me. How to handle the weight. How to handle the weight. Type that in for Pastor Nate. Y'all know how we do it. Uh, type it in for me. And uh, we're going to talk about it today. We're going to talk about it today. How to handle, how to handle the weight. I need everybody to type that in. How to handle the weight. How to handle the weight. That's good. Type it in for me. How to handle the weight, y'all. We're going to be in... Um, we're going to be in Romans chapter four today, Romans chapter four um, on on this morning. How to handle the weight. Y'all type that in for Pastor Nate. How to handle the weight. Everybody type that in for me. How to handle the weight. How to handle the weight. Type that in for me. Everybody type it in. How to handle the weight. I know it. I know you don't want to hear it, but I got to help you. We're going to, we're going to be motivated this week. How to handle the weight. I want to read Romans chapter four, y'all. I'm going to put it up. How to handle the weight. And that's it, Gwen. Gwen put it in all caps. Weight, W-A-I-T. How <clears throat> to handle the weight. 
how to handle the weight. That's what we're dealing with today, how to handle the weight, all right? I need you, everybody to take some notes if you can. I want you to take as many notes um, as you can today, uh, how to handle the weight. Tag some people in this morning. Uh, I'm tagging a few more people, y'all, because I just believe this word is going to be a blessing on today, how to handle the weight, all right? Let's look at Romans chapter four, guys. Romans chapter four, let's look at it. Romans chapter four, and let's look at um, beginning at verse, uh, let's go with verse number 17. Y'all ready? As it is written, here's the backdrop. Abram, sore of Abram, father of the nation, uh, father of faith, many deem him as. Uh, it deals with a particular season in him and Sarah's life, all right? And so I, I like it because it is just a, uh, it's it's a narrative, it's a story that's real, that's just full of hope, right? It's just full of hope. Look at Romans chapter four, verse 17, all right? <clears throat> verse 17 says, as it is written, I have made you, speaking of Abraham, a father of many nations in the presence of him who believed God, who gives life to the dead, and cause those things which do not exist as though they did. Watch what he does. Who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Look at verse 18. Who contrary to hope, Abraham, contrary to what he shouldn't have been hopeful for, in hope, believed. Now, circumstances said, Abraham, you shouldn't have hope, but in hope, what did Abram do? In hope, he believed so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. You got to catch that faith room. What was spoken according to what was spoken, according to to what was spoken. I'm in a series now with our church dealing with this idea of great faith. And when you look at Hebrews 1, now faith is. There are several words for faith, but faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And then, of course, when you look at that, our faith is able to stand because of the substructure. It stands under. It is the substance of things that I hope for. It is something that I can hope for because faith stands under the promises of God. That's what faith really does. My faith is what it is because it stands under what God has spoken. So shall his descendants be. Now look at verse 19. And not being, this is good, y'all, stay with me. And not being weak in faith, stay with me, faith room, he did not consider his own body already dead. Now, you got to catch that. Look at the circumstance. His body already dead because he was about, what, 100 years old. He's about 100. In other words, y'all, when he speaks of his body being dead, everything not working. <clears throat> everything not working. So, God, how can you tell me this? How can you speak this word over my life? And I'm 100 years old. Y'all stay with me, grown folk. And everything's not working. Even my wife Sarah's womb is dead. Notice now, God, I, you're giving me a promise, and and it really and God, it really doesn't make any sense to me because I'm dead and my wife's womb is dead. But note what He said, God, I hear you. And watch what verse twenty says. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith. Y'all type that in. Strengthened in faith. Because, y'all, let me tell y'all something. In this season, God is about to give you a word that don't make sense. Come on, faith room. God is about to give you instruction that doesn't make sense. Notice what he says to Abraham. Abraham, something is about to come forth. And Abram is in a season that doesn't make sense. Y'all, this is what I want to give you today. This is why I want you to get excited because God often speaks to us and begins to bring promise to us in seasons that don't make sense. And I want to talk to everybody who's in a don't make sense season and it doesn't make sense and you don't see how and that's when God moves. And notice what Abraham teaches us today, y'all. He did not waver. Look at verse 20 at the promise of God. 
That's it, Ruby. Put it in. But but through unbelief. But he was strengthened. In other words, even though it didn't make sense, he was strengthened in faith. That's it, Kirsten. Even though the facts said you ought to doubt and you ought to worry and you ought to have unbelief. Here's what Abram. Abram was strengthened in faith. Now, look at this last verse, y'all, verse 21. And, and maybe I'll let you shout if you want to shout now. I'll let you shout if you want to shout. Watch this. He said, I was strengthened in faith, and here's what I was doing. I'm giving glory to God. I'm giving glory. Notice, y'all, please, Faith Room, stay with Pastor Nate. Notice, I don't have it yet. It's not in my possessions yet. My body is dead. My wife's womb doesn't work anymore. And God, you've given me this promise. But here's what I'm going to do, God. I don't have it, but I'm still giving God glory. Y'all, this is how you know you're growing. God, it's not in my possession. God, I'm still under the same circumstances, but here's what I'm going to do. Faith Room, you ought to do that this morning because you're in a don't make sense season. You're in a it doesn't feel good season. You're in a season of ready to give up. And God wants to see, can you, come on, y'all, we're at 300 right now. God wants to know, all 300 of you, 302, uh, that can you give me glory, come on, in a season, Phyllis, that does not make sense. Come on, Courtney. Y'all, listen, I feel like God is about to break something through on this Monday because some of you, yeah, the enemy didn't want you to shout this morning. He didn't want you to give God praise this morning. In fact, the circumstance is designed to take your praise. But here's what you have to do. God, I give you glory. Do that right now. Lift your hand. God, I give you glory. Here's why I give you glory. Because I'm fully convinced, like Abraham, that what he promised, he will also perform. Come on, somebody. Y'all, I'm about to run around this hotel here in Las Vegas. Tell somebody what he promised he is able to perform. You know why I'm giving God glory? Because I know what's over me. He's able to bring it to pass. I know what he spoke in my secret closet of prayer. And I know that he's able to bring it to pass. And here is how you know you're growing. Can you give him honor? Can you give him praise? even though you don't have it. I feel this in my spirit. Y'all know I'm not spooky, but I believe something is about to be released to the person who can give him a sacrificial praise. I believe something is about to be released for the person who can give him a before it's delivered praise. Come on, somebody. I believe heaven is about to push the release button. Come on, y'all ain't playing. And, he, and heaven is about to push the release button on everybody this morning who is able to give praise beforehand. Come on, I'm going to give you a chance. 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 Come on, clap those hands. Lift God up. Come on today. We're at 313 right now. Y'all, come on, y'all. 313 of y'all. Y'all know we can shake hell right now and magnify heaven if 317 of you would just do this for pastor hey give god a praise right now come on y'all i hope you're talking you may be in your car you may be at work and you can't talk as loud but let god fill it in your heart that something is about to be released i need 15 of y'all i need 15 of y'all to type that in something is about to be released listen something is about to be released so i want to talk today i want to motivate you today I want to motivate you today, guys. Come on. Come on. I feel you, Lord. I feel you, Lord. I feel you, Lord. Something is about to be released. Something is about to be released. So let me give you this word today. Clyde, let me give you this word, Clyde. Clyde said, praise God. Come on, man. That's it. Helena, lift those hands. That's it. God, I thank you. That's it. Felicia, I thank him, Felicia, even before he delivers it. Even before he's delivering it. That's it, Vanessa. Vanessa said, I'm praising God. I'm praising God in advance. Come on, y'all, of my healing. Praising God. That's it. What do you look in advance, God? Because you are showing God. God, I don't have to have it to believe that you can do it. Rewind. I don't have to have it to believe that he can do it. I don't have to see it to believe that he can do it. Come on, guys. It's about to be released. Something about to be released. That's it. I see it. That's it. It's about to be released. Now, let me go here, y'all. Let me go here. Let me go here. Let me go here. Let, let me give you a main point. Let me give you a main point. Here's the main point. Y'all catch this main point. Y'all ready? Here's the main point. Waiting on God can be the hardest test in faith. Let me tell y'all, it's not easy. It's not easy. I'm sitting here and I'm not uh, playing about this point. It's not easy. It's one of the hardest tests in faith to have to wait on God. Wait on your healing. Wait on your deliverance. Wait on the door to open. Wait on your next level. Wait on your break. Come on. It's a hard, it's one of the hardest 
test in our faith to have to wait on God, to have to sit in a posture of belief, to have to sit in a posture of worship, to have to still sit in a posture of prayer. I still got to fast. I still got to wake up and seek his face early in the morning, but I don't see it. It's not manifested. And it's one of the hardest things to do when you're trying to live right, but you're not seeing any, listen, seemingly benefits of you trying to live right. While you look at the wicked living horrible lives, not trying to please God, but it seems like the wicked is prospering in this world. And that's why the Bible says in Psalm 37, fret not thyself. I feel the Lord this morning of evil doers for they shall soon be cut off, but you continue to delight yourself in the Lord. And here's what you got to do, y'all. You got to see other people being blessed in your waiting season and you still have to trust that God's going to do it. Can I be honest with y'all? That's not easy. Can somebody help Pastor Nate and, and help me and say, that's not easy. Yeah, y'all, I do want to celebrate. Ain't no haterade over here. Ain't no shade over here. I want, come on, let me be honest. I want to see people blessed. I love to see doors open for other people. But can we be honest? Come on, y'all, since we family and kinfolk, can we be honest and say that every now and then I want to just know God hadn't forgotten me? Okay, okay, because some of y'all think it's jealousy. It ain't jealousy, but every now and then, God, do you see me over here? Has everybody, anybody had that question? God, do you see me over here? Do you see all the weed I done stopped smoking? And, and, and God, how I done put down the alcohol? And God, my attitude used to be off the chain, but I'm changing my attitude. And God, I don't see a manifestation of your hand moving in my life. Am I the only one? But Jojo, Pookie, John, John, Tasha, Erica, Buki, Kuki, all them, all the nicknames. Uh, they and, and it seemed like door. Every time I look around, it's something. God, where are you? It's the hardest thing to do, y'all. And I know we don't want to admit it. I know we don't want to admit it. But but it's saying. Listen, y'all. Listen to this. Saying you believe he can do it is one thing. Saying it is one thing. Saying it, Donna, is one thing. Can I talk to y'all this morning? We had 337 people this morning. Can y'all believe that? 337. Listen, saying you believe he can do it is one thing. Now, here's another thing. Standing unwavering in that belief is another. Saying is one thing. Talk is cheap, Tony. Tony, talk is cheap. Let me say it again. Talk is cheap. Can I say it for the people in the back? Talk is cheap. Can I say it one time? Talk is cheap. Saying it is one thing, but listen to Pastor Nate, but standing, come on guys, but standing is another thing. Standing in unwavering faith is another thing. Are y'all hearing Pastor Nate this morning? Am I making sense? Talk is cheap. Some of y'all got good talk game. Oh, you can talk. Oh, you can talk. Oh, it sounds good. Oh, it sounds good on Sunday morning. Yes, it does. Oh, you got, it sounds good on Sunday morning. But, but talk is cheap, everybody. Now, let me give you this. Let me give you this, y'all. And I'm going to teach this thing. I'm going to break this thing down. There are two ways you can wait. I want you to copy this down. Two ways you can wait. Two ways you can wait. Two ways that you can wait. Let me give you the first one. Are y'all ready? Let me give you the first one. There are two ways you can wait. I want you to write this word down because the first way that you can wait is passively. All right? Write that in. Type that in. Passively. Type it in. Passively 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 i'm gonna give you i'm gonna give you what that means y'all i want to teach it today if you don't mind i want to teach it today if you don't mind you can wait passively type that in passively okay and we're gonna deal with this thing all right a person who waits passively i've kind of written it uh written it in because i wanted you to see it okay a person who waits passively let's read it y'all let's read it a person who waits passively here's what they do are y'all ready they wait for something or they hope for something, a person hopes that something good will happen. I'm hoping, I'm waiting. Y'all see it? I, I, I want I want the door to open. I, 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 I want I want I want God to move. And they're listen, and a person who's passively waiting, you know what they'll do? That they, they will sit around waiting to see if it does. You know what, God? I'm gonna I'm I'm post up, God. I'm gonna post up. I'm gonna post up, God, and uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna sit around, God. I'm I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna log into the faith room. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep praying, God. I'm, I'm gonna sit around. I'm gonna, I'm gonna post up, God. 
and I'm going to see if you're going to move. I'm going to see if you're going to move. Now, now y'all seeing this? Uh, but, but, but watch the shift. Uh, uh, after a short time, though, they give up saying that's it. Passive people. Hold up. Here, here's what a passive person do. Y'all don't, y'all, y'all don't log off on me now. Here's what a passive person do. God, I, okay, I, I'm hoping, I'm believing, I know you're God. I know you're good all the time and all the time you're good. God, I know this. So I'm going to go to worship. I'm going to pray because I'm going to hope. I'm going to sit around and I'm going to hope. I'm going to see if it does happen. After a short time, I want you to note short time. Here's what a passive person do. They give up saying that's it. You know what a passive person says, y'all? I've waited long enough. Now, you ain't going to be honest, but waiting is hard for you uh, when it comes to waiting for a longer period of time. You want it right now. You want God to move as soon as you say amen. You want it as soon as the benediction happens. And if it doesn't happen after the benediction, you're going to give up and say, I've waited long enough. And you want God to do it immediately. You, you, want an, you want an immediate blessing. And God, if you don't do it immediately or soon on my schedule, God, I give up. Can I tell you this, y'all, without offending anybody? Can I tell you this without offending anybody? Please catch what I'm saying. And I want you to type this in if you can, if you can type fast, because I'm not going to stay here long. The passive person has a lot of wishbone, but not a lot of backbone. Come on, Pastor Nate Stewart. Say it again. A passive person has a lot of wishbone. Come on here. But not a lot of backbone. I need y'all to get that. There's a difference between a wishbone and a backbone. Uh huh. A wishbone is all you sit around and, and do is uh, think of things you want. And think of things you desire and you sit around with your pad and your pen and all you're doing is giving God a wish list. And God, can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? Can you open this door? And a lot of us as believers and in some of us who are not believers, we got a lot of wish list. We always got our hand out. My mama used to say that when I was growing up. Always got your hand out. But God says, here's what I want you to know about a passive person. They don't have any backbone because passive people, if they don't get their wish, they chunk the deuces. I know I'm talking better than y'all talking back to me. You get your ball and you go into in the crib when you don't get your way. You pack up and leave because if your wish don't come true, you don't have the backbone to stand and wait and trust God until the manifestation happens. Some of you got a lot of wishbone, <laughs> but not a lot of backbone. Right. So one way we can wait is passively. Uh huh. That's it, Tamara. Passive. That's what a passive person does, T. They chunk the deuces. How many of you have chunked the deuces on your promise because it hadn't come fast enough? How many of you have chunked uh, chunk the deuces on your miracle because the miracle wasn't released? You can't be passive and wait right. Passive people don't wait right. Passive people don't wait right. Let me rewind. And I'm going to give you this by way of remembrance because I will never, D. Allen, I will never forget it, big bro. I will never forget this illustration. And I told my church greater like this because y'all stories just come by everyday life. Uh, Charles Spurgeon said every preacher should have a newspaper in one hand and a Bible in the next thing, uh, in the other hand, because everyday events prove the power of God. Y'all, let me tell you again. Let's go back to Chick-fil-A. Y'all know Chick-fil-A is always busy. This is my rewind story, and I'll never forget it because every time I think about it, I shout again. Here's my rewind story. Chick-fil-A, the line is long. And y'all, I ordered my food. In fact, I ordered meals for three people. I ordered meals for three people. It was a pretty healthy bill. I got everything large. I got everything large. And I added some of that macaroni and cheese. And I added everything. It was large. And then I got one of those milkshakes. And yeah, it was one of those, uh, the lemonade, 
milkshake thing they had. And y'all, the order was big. Do you need a cup, cup holder? Yes, I do. And so y'all, there was a car in front of me. I told you the line was long. It wasn't moving fast. Chick-fil-A, it's always a line because the chicken is sanctified and anointed. Y'all know that, right? The chicken is full of the Holy Ghost. And that chicken at Chick-fil-A, I have you waiting in a long line. And that's why people have to come out to your car because the line is long. And y'all, I guess the car in front of me, the car in front of me got tired of waiting. And that car in front of me, they, they, they just uh, got out of line. Y'all know when people move out of line with attitude. In other words, y'all, they got out of line. Uh, and I'll never forget this illustration as long as I live. And can I tell y'all this? Can I tell y'all this? Y'all know when you go to Chick-fil-A, you can pay the person at the little booth before you actually get to the window to get your food. And y'all, I get up there and the car in front of me, the car in front of me obviously felt like being a blessing because here's what the man said when I had my car hanging out the window. The man said to me, the kid that is, a little a kid said to me who was working there, he said to me, the car in front of you said be blessed. Let me tell y'all, three orders, three large orders, they paid it forward. But can I tell you why I still shout on that story? Because that pay it forward wasn't meant for me. It was meant for the person who was in front of me. And if the person in front of me would have just waited a little while longer, the meal that they ordered would have already been paid for. And let me tell you, when you forfeit, the weight. And when you forfeit what God, see, listen, the car in front of me put the order in, they put the order in, but they didn't wait long enough. And so I received the blessing because somebody was passive because it wasn't coming fast enough. Can I tell 15 of y'all, don't you get out of line. You better stay in line, keep your car running, take your word out and read it while you wait. Look at something uh, that's going to be speaking to your soul while you wait but don't you get out of line because something is about to break free in your life. Passive, y'all, passive, passive. But then there's another way you can wait. There's a weight that I want to call the expectant. You can wait in expectance. Somebody shout expectant. I'm wait a person who is hopeful, believing the answer is around the corner due to arrive at any minute. Their belief is not passive, but their heart is full of hope, expecting this problem to be solved at any moment. Are y'all hearing me? A person who is expectant, they wake up on a Monday morning expecting to find the answer. Listen, they may not wait and wait, but suddenly, watch this, a person who is expecting, like the uh, passive person, they may not wait and keep on waiting, but the expecting person, they await and they'll keep on waiting, and suddenly what they have been waiting for will happen. Y'all, I got to go. I got to go. Anybody, anybody want to take this quick quiz? What type of waiter are you? Let's talk, Faith Room. We're, we're at 350 people today. What type of waiter are you? Y'all holler at Pastor Nate now. Are you, are you passive or are you expected? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, passive, meaning that God, I'm out because you ain't moving fast enough. And can I just parenthetically drop this off? Your chunking the deuces doesn't manipulate heaven. Your chunking the deuces don't make heaven move any faster. It actually slows up your process of deliverance. You think chunking the deuce is going to make God feel a certain kind of way? The only thing God is going to say is you ain't ready. Because I was almost about to release it. What type of waiter are you? Y'all don't be playing in here now. Because if you're expecting now, there is a response that I ought, I ought to see in your life. So let's look at the text, y'all. Let's look at the text today. Romans chapter 4. Uh, Pastor Nate, tell me then, how should I wait? Look at the first point. Focus on what God can do. This is how you wait. Focus on what God can do. We all type that in for Pastor Nate. Look at verse 17. It says, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God. I want y'all to look at it now. Come on. I'm going to try to work this board. I'm going to try to work this board and talk to y'all at the same time. Look at, verse, look at verse 17. Look at verse 17. First point is this. I'm going to focus on what God can do. Type that in. What's up, Don? I'm going to focus on what God can do. 
and Torga. That's it. Thank you so much. Dayona, I'm going to focus, TJ. I'm going to focus on what God can do. Sylvia, I'm going to focus on what God can do. Natasha, you got that? Look at verse 17. It is, as it is written, I made you a father of many nations in the presence of him who believed God, who gives. Watch what he does. What can he do? He gives what? He gives life to the dead. Watch what he does. He gives. What can God do? God can give what? God can give what? He can do what? He can give life. He can do what? He can give life to the dead and call into being things that were not. Listen to what God can do. Twofold. Look at the text. Verse 17. He can do two things. One, he can make dead stuff live. And two, he can bring forth stuff that's not as though it was. Are y'all shouting with me this morning on this Motivational Monday? He can bring dead stuff to life and he can raise forth things that was not as though it was. Can I tell you this, Faith Room, while the situation may be out of our control, it's not out of God's control. Let me pump the brakes and say it again. While it may be out of our control, it's not out of God's control. Can y'all hear me very closely this morning? The key is to focus not on what we can't do, but focus on what God can do. Come on, Pastor Nate. Here is the key. I'm not going to focus on what I can't do. You know why we're frustrated and aggravated and seemingly uh, all over the place mentally? Because you keep focusing on what you can't do. You keep focusing on your weaknesses. But what I'm going to tell you on this Motivational Monday is that stop focusing, Erica. Stop focusing, Starla, on what you can't do and start focusing on what God can do. Here's my shout. Y'all ready for it? Jermon, here's my shout. Now, I'm just talking to some people got some dead stuff in your life right now. And you got some stuff that you want to see manifest. I'm talking to y'all. You ought to be you ought to be excited if nobody else is excited. Here's my shout. Paul is writing to this church at Rome, bringing up this this narrative of Abraham. Paul is saying, "Here it is. Are y'all ready, Nakia? Paul is saying God can either bring to life what has died. Mm, here it is. This is for me, or." He can create something new out of nothing. Paul is saying, listen, y'all, somebody ought to be shouting right now because here's what's about to happen in your life. God is about to bring to life what has died or he is about to create something new out of nothing. Sheila, can I tell y'all this? God can give life to a career. He can give life to a marriage or a dream. He can bring life to something that looks and feels like it's dead. Can I get one witness in the room who can testify that there's been some stuff with no pulse and no movement in your life and some kind of way God stepped in that thing and he brought life to what you thought was dead. Do I have a witness in here? Do I have a witness in here? Do I have a witness in here? DA, what you say? What you say, Damon? Damon said Abraham was in death and devastation and walked out a rich man with a lineage and his wife's womb was dead. Do y'all hear this man of God? Damon, listen, man, listen. This ain't a time to throw a pity party. Jesus said in Luke 18, 27, type in Luke 18, 27, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Luke 18, 27. Y'all, there are 360 of y'all in here. Things that are impossible with man is possible for God. Here's what, I, here's what I've learned, Minister and Training Lavelle. Abraham didn't put his faith in himself or in the power of positive thinking. Y'all, it's got to be. Listen, I love quotes, but a meme ain't going to help your faith. Mm -mm. You can get them 1,800, 100 quotes for the day, 100,000 quotes for a happy life. Listen, y'all, his faith wasn't in power. Listen, 
please don't get me wrong. Positive thinking is good, but my faith cannot be in me. It cannot be in positive thinking. If I'm going to believe and move, I have to put my faith in God. Listen, I'm done. When we come to those dead ends, we don't need more positive thoughts. We need faith in God. You see, positive quotes, y'all, get me through a moment. I can read a quote and be like, "Woo, talk. But in the middle of the day, I've forgotten that quote and my faith is where it, where it was. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not just going to lean on an, an encouraging quote. I'm going to lean on the power of God. I'm leaning this Monday, y'all, on the power of God. Let me give you point two. You got to trust what God can do. But then here's point two. Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready for point two? Here's point two. I want y'all to write this down. Trust God's promises. Look at verse 18. Trust God's promises. Look at verse 18. I'm going to put it up for you. Trust God's promises. Watch this. It says, who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father, watch this, of many nations, according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be. Can I give you this faith room? Even while it looked hopeless for Abraham to have kids, Abraham, beyond all hope, when hope seemed dead, in hope he believed. Let me say it again. When everything in his life looked hopeless. Look at the promise. You're going to have all these kids, Abraham. Abraham, beyond all hope, when hope seemed dead, in hope he believed. How can we tell then? Here's a question, Faith Room. And I got to get it. I'm on good time, y'all. I'm not a, ain't it? Is it for, listen. How, how then, Latoria, thank you for, for, for getting these points. How can we tell if hope is dying within us? That's a good question. I'm going to give you this. How, how can you know, Toy Toy, that hope, Shay, Ambrosia, is dying within us? It's when we start. Y'all ready for this answer? Type this in. When we start using the word never. That's how you know hope is dying. It will never happen. They will never change. I'll never feel better. Whenever never becomes a part of your vocabulary. Thank you, Toya. You are in trouble. And that's why your child has not changed because you have spoken that over their life. Life is in your mouth. My baby, you ain't going to never be nothing. You're going to be, you, 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 you're going to be just like, so, never, you, 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 they'll never change. Ain't no hope for him. I'll never get out of depression. I'll never feel good. You see what I'm doing? Whenever, listen, y'all, whenever you use the word never, that is a sign and indication that your faith is dying. Your hope is dying. Look at what Abraham did. When hope seemed dead, he believed in hope and kept faith in God. Y'all see that? Listen to me closely. Please get this. And I don't know who can type fast to type this in. Dennis, minister, listen to this. Remove never, y'all. Please, can we just, it'll never happen. It'll never, never use the word never. Because y'all, when you get that word never in your spirit, it does something. I want you to listen to me closely and I'm gone. A promise, hear me closely. Say it slow, Pastor Nate, or I will, God. A promise is only as good as the one making the promise. A promise, Donna, Ashley Porter, is only as good as the one making the promise. And since God made the promise, the promise will come about. Y'all, that's that, that I could really close right now. No, 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 some folk 
have made promises to you. And now you can't trust their word. What's that saying? As far as I can throw you, or I, I don't trust. What, what, what is it? Listen, I, because a promise is, um, y'all know, come on. Y'all know, y'all done seen it in January. Everybody, you know, 25 people saying they're going, we're we, we doing a cruise in, in, in September. August get here, you get that text thread, 12 of them. Hey, when was that cruise again? I promise. And you done made your reservation, made your plans. A promise is only as good. You know why I'm not going to lose my mind, y'all? I got to get out of here, y'all. You know I ain't going to lose my mind this week, this, this day. You know why? Because the promise maker is trustworthy. He is not a man that he should lie. What God said, he will perform. Y'all listen to this. You got to trust what God can do. You got to trust his promises. And here it is, y'all. We have 10 minutes left. Let me give you this third one. Y'all write this down. Face the facts. That's verse 19 and 20. Face the facts. Type that in. Face the facts. Face the facts. We got, we got nine minutes, y'all. Face the facts. Face the facts. Look at this next verse. Look at verse 19. Look at verse 19. Look at what he says. Verse 19 says what? And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body. Notice the facts. Already dead. Since he was 100 years old. And the deadness of Sarah's womb. Watch this. Abraham. Mm, this is good, man. Thank you, Lord. Y'all, there are 347 people in here, and I know that the devil is mad because there's too many of y'all getting hope today. Abraham recognized that him and his wife were past childbearing years. And to have kids in Abraham's mind was medically impossible. Nope. Face the facts. Abraham doesn't deny these facts. Instead, he faces the facts with faith. Y'all, I'm trying to teach this lesson. Notice, he does not deny the facts. But he faces the facts with faith. Latisha, good to see you, sis. Love you. Thank you so much. And he grounds your feet in the process. Tish, that's good. Face, can you type in stop line and face the facts? Stop buttering up your situation and face the facts. Stop it. What do you mean? Stop saying you're okay and you're not okay. Stop trying to look good for other people when you're barely making it yourself. Stop it. Just stop it. Abraham teaches us a lesson that you can be a father of a nation and still be honest about your circumstances. Y'all, some people will call it being too transparent. Some people will say you're telling too many people your business. No, I'm just telling you the facts. Can, can I borrow $200? I ain't got $200. That's the facts. That's the facts. Hear me, y'all. And I'm out of here. I, I, I said I'm out of here how many times? Okay. If I said I'm out of here four times, that means I got one more. Okay. Here's, I'm out of here. This, that's number four. So that means I'm out of here one more time. Here it is. Hear me closely. Faith doesn't ignore reality. Faith doesn't pretend a problem doesn't exist. Faith doesn't ignore reality. Y'all, you ain't got to like me. They ain't got to like you, but you are not going to lie about your reality. I'm in a tough season financially. I'm in a tough season physically. 
I'm in a tough season. What is your, I'm in a, you got to admit that. Face the facts. Are y'all hearing me today? Now listen to me closely. Listen to me closely. That's it, Sharina. Faith doesn't ignore reality. Faith doesn't pretend a problem doesn't exist. Here's what faith does, Linda. Faith is facing the facts without being discouraged by them. Oh, that's good. Thank you, Jesus. Faith is facing the facts. Money is low. Still got my joy, though. Children seem so unappreciative, but still got my joy. My marriage is in trouble, but some kind of way I still find a way to not be discouraged. Can I tell you how you're growing, Faith Room? In the five minutes we have, and we're out of here. The reason that you're growing is that faith is knowing the problem and believing your reality without being discouraged by them. That's what he does, Vanessa. He uses discouragement, man. I've been there. Will y'all be honest with me? Man, I've my circumstances in life, it, it can bring discouragement. And you have to walk around, man, sometimes with this heaviness on you and this and this and this dark cloud over you, but you don't want to show it. You, but but here's what I have to learn on this Monday, y'all. We're gonna release out of this room. It is what it is, guys. Your marriage didn't work. It is what it is. The relationship ended. It is what it is. Okay, the job situation. It's not coming together. It is what it, stop it. We're not going to pretend, but I'm not going to let it discourage me. Devil, this is the last time. Faith is knowing the problem, but believing God is working through it. Here's my last point, y'all. I promise. Number four, write this down. Write this down. Number four, rejoice in anticipation. Look at what he did in verse 20. Look at what he did in verse 20. Verse 20 says he did not waver at the promise of God. That's what he said in verse 20. Do y'all see that? He did not waver. Look at it. He did not waver at the promises of God through unbelief, but with strengthened in faith. Notice what he's doing, y'all. What is he doing? Notice, notice, giving glory to God. 340 of you, listen to me. He rejoiced before the fact, before the promise was achieved. See, a lot of times we thank God for something, listen, after it happens. Stay with me. I'm in the text, y'all. That's gratitude. When you when you bless me, I thank you after the fact. You don't go up to people and say, thank you for the blessing, because you ain't got it. Gratitude is you give it, and I appreciate it by giving you a thank you. Now, some people are trifling because they don't even say thank you. But that's another, that's another, that's another faith room. Because you can bless people and they'll just act like they deserve that and all. But real people who are full of gratitude, we thank God for something after it happens. But when we thank God before it happens, that's faith. Y'all listen, I, I hope I hope I've done my job in exegeting this passage. I listen, I, listen. Um you are full of gratitude because you you know how to say thank you after the fact, but that ain't faith. Faith is God thank you before it happens. Listen, guys, I, I love you today. I appreciate all of you today. Let me let me just give you this. Um, I want everybody, whatever you're dealing with right now, any special prayer requests, I want you to type them in because I want our team to go back. We have 330 live right now between YouTube and Facebook, 330. 
If you feel comfortable enough, type in any prayer request that you have, any prayer request that you have. I want you to I want you to type it in and we're going to pray. We're going to get ready for a great week. I want you to do that. I want you to I want you to type in your prayer request. I want you to type in your prayer request and we're going to pray. I don't care what it is. I don't care what you may be going through right now. I want you to type in your prayer request and our team will go back and catch it. I pray you were motivated today. I pray you were encouraged today, y'all. I, I Listen, I am so grateful for the faith room because, man, we, you know, when it's not about a particular local church, this is not about what church you go to or who your pastor is. This is a group of believers from everywhere, north, south, east, west, coming together, trying to keep it together. You know why we're coming together? To try to keep it together. We're real people with real concerns getting real solution. Now y'all stay on because I have a special announcement. Um, because tomorrow we're going to begin a new series. Type in your prayer request and we're going to get it. We're going to get it. Um, we're going to begin a new series tomorrow. Uh, that's titled Help. I'm angry with God. There's this, there's this, doctrine or principle of theodicy theo theos god 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 if you are god if you are so good theodicy asks the question then god why do you allow suffering god if you're so good and merciful why did you allow my mama to die why did, why, y'all, let me be honest with you. I've had so many requests. I can remember vividly when my mom died, I was angry with God. Is it right to be angry with God? Is it a sin? God, you knew that person was not right for me. Why did you let me fall in love with them? So stuff like that. Some of the things we say may not be accurate or true, but 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 that's how we feel. We're going to be, I don't know if you've ever been there because some people are going to say this is blasphemy, but I'm trying to bring lessons to this room that people are dealing with in their life. Help, I'm angry with God. Melissa, I'm going to read your comment, y'all, and I want everybody to sow a first of the week seed today. I'm expecting to have a child. And I'm not in the relationship, and I don't feel I want the dad there because he told me getting pregnant was a mistake. I have too many kids and talk to other women the whole time I put him out and no longer want him in my life. But I want to handle it acceptable, all right? I'm not bitter but hurt, but I know God. Melissa, thank you for that prayer request, sis. Thank you for that prayer request. I appreciate it. And we're going to pray for you today. Joyette Cooper Financial. Shimmy said, yes, Pastor Nate, I'm not alone on being angry with God for taking my mother from me. We're going to talk about that in context. Praying over battle, battling my faith from being overwhelmed with life. I can't make any decision in my life with confidence. Y'all see this young lady here? Pray for my husband and my best friend, April, who's in ICU with COVID. Thank you. Patrice, thank you so much. My daughter, He's fighting COVID-19, home in bed for almost three weeks. Janaea Nylon, her sister, is caring, is caring for her while working, asking for prayer for her to remain COVID-free. Bless their finances. Thank you, Faith Room. Pray for continued health, favor, wisdom, and discernment for me and all my family, bringing us closer together. Y'all, we're going to pray. Our team, I'm going to have our team to go back and personally pray for you um, in these requests. I want everybody who would like to sow a first of the week seed at the end of the week, we're going to be a blessing. I don't know why I keep feeling like uh, with where everyone's at, we, we want to do some gas giveaway this week. Gas. Uh, Y'all, we sold $600 to help a person stop an eviction process and was able to get that person some assistance through their city. And $600 of what you sold went to that particular 
single mom. And we connected them again. That money was not given directly to the person, but it was sent to the organization, uh, to the company. And 600, y'all give God praise for that, please. And uh, and they have, uh, they're going to write something so I can read it tomorrow as it relates to the seed that you saw. And this week, y'all, uh, I just want to bless some people with gas. I don't know why the Lord put that on my heart. Gas, man. It seemed like I'm stopping every other day to put gas. I just want to be a blessing, y'all. As long as I live, I just want to be a blessing to people. And I go to bed at night knowing that um, that I have integrity. I, I go to bed knowing that I'm doing right by these resources, our team um, doing right by these resources. And, um, and God's going to keep breathing on it. And so thank you so much for the seed that you're going to sow today. Y'all, here's a charge for the day. Uh, anybody want to give a charge for the day? Let me let me let y'all give a charge for the day. Let me see. Anybody have a charge they want to give today? Anybody have a charge? We have 309 still in here. Anybody have a charge that they want to give? Anybody? And I'm going to see if it's good. I'm going to see if it's good. What's the charge? Based on what we talked about today. Y'all know a charge can't be 18 paragraphs. Now it's got to be one line. Jocelyn Evans Jones, I'm praying for you your son and husband's relationship. Yaffa, I think we'll go with that. Trust God. Yaffa, where you at? That's the same thing. Trust in God and keep the faith. I like it, Yaffa. I like it. Girl, you won. Let's put that in, y'all. Trust in God and keep the faith. I like it. Y'all helping me today, boy. Uh, I appreciate it. Faith run. All right. I don't type like Cherie, so y'all leave me alone. I don't care. I don't care what y'all say about me. Trust in God and keep the faith of faith run. Y'all, let's pray together. Um, thank you for your time today. Father, I love you. I'm grateful for another day that we can wake up and breathe. And thank you for life. Thank you for this platform. God, we had over 360 people in here today live. And I thank you, God, for entrusting so many people to this one hour of empowerment. God, you know our heart is not about creating division, pulling people from their ministries. God, this is just about believers, unbelievers, regular people coming together in a space where they can be transparent and honest. God, I never knew that when you gave the vision two years ago that we would be here. I'm grateful. I'm thankful for our team, Cherie, Kadrick, Oris, Kim. Thank you for those who participate, the pastors, leaders, and voices that come into this space. God, we are dealing with some uncertain times. We are dealing with so many things in life right now. Financial issues, relationship issues. People are praying for loved ones with COVID and sickness and cancer. People are dealing with grief and death. People are dealing with attitudes of unforgiveness. And God, we're all just trying to make it. We're people, God. We are not. We're not perfect. We, we're not. We're broken. We're marred clay. And all I ask is, God, you would just keep us in your hand. Keep us in your hand, God. We apologize and ask for forgiveness for any sins that we've committed. Sins that we knew about. Sins that we didn't know about. Commission. Omission. Forgive us, God. Blout out our transgressions. We confess our sins before you right now. I pray for a great week. No drama, no stress, no mess to the point of it pulling us into a space that dishonors you. God, my personal prayer every single day I live as the leader of this platform, as a leader in a family, as a leader in your church, as a leader in the community, my family, my church, my community, my responsibilities. God, help me to walk in integrity. God, I want to be a man that practices what I preach. And my only prayer 
if you never give me money, if you never give me another platform, give me more integrity. For every pastor, I love my co-laborers, men and women who you call just like me. Give us more integrity so that we can live right, talk right, act right, love right, forgive right, lead right. And for everybody in this platform, touch and bless in Jesus name. Amen. Y'all, I love you. Have a great day. Take care of yourself. Love your family. And we'll see you in the morning. Help. I'm angry with God. Come in the room with an open mind tomorrow as we give you insight to this very powerful subject thought. I'm angry with God. I love you, Faith Room. Peace.